Switch and case might look absolutely simple in Golang, but they are a little bit tricky in some places. Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video on our Golang series and let's talk about the switch and case. We're going to design up two sample cases of switch and case. One is going to be based on classic rating system. Another one is going to be based on temperature. These are pretty much really go-to cases when we want to discuss switch and cases. So we're going to do that and you're going to realize there are some small syntactical issues in the switch and case that you need to watch out in case you want to avoid a couple of errors here. Let's go ahead and talk about them. So just create a new file and we're going to uh, create a simple go main up here. There we go. Looks nice. Absolutely fine. So here we are going to first and foremost define a variable. Let's call it as simply rating and infer that with a value of probably eight. Now our rating system is going to be just between one and five. So we are taking up for a default case for anything else. Just provide this one. Now moving further, we got a switch. There we go. So how we evaluate for a switch, we provide the case that we want to evaluate. And after that, we simply provide a couple of cases. So for example, if the rating is one, I want to do certain things. I'm going to simply go ahead and say that FMT dot print LN. And I'm going to just display this rating as one simply like that. And I'm going to save this one. I do want to print multiple statements here. So I want to evaluate for multiple cases. And this one is going to evaluate for both two and three. You can separate by comma and can evaluate for multiple cases as well, just like this. So I'm going to say two or three. And then I'm going to have one more, which is going to be for uh, four, just like that. We are going to print four. And we're going to have the last one, which is going to be for five. So this goes for five. But our rating is actually five. So we need to have a default case as well. So whenever you put on for the default, that means anything else happen from the mentioned case, this is going to handle all of that. So we're going to simply go ahead and do a FMT print. And we're going to say uh, something like other or others just like that. Now, if we are going to evaluate this, we are going to see that it just goes, oops, uh, we got some kind of error somewhere. Uh, let's go ahead and see that it says, hey, there's line 23. Oh, my bad, I was just missing out this here. So there we go, a classic mistake, nothing to be worried. So when we run this one here, you can see that we got others. So okay, that's great. But what if I go up here, and this is one of my favorite feature, by the way, if I go ahead and change it to four, and if I run the program again, uh, we see the four, so you can see there is no default fall through or falling through the cases after that, which happens in variety of language absolutely a nightmare to handle. In case you explicitly want to have this fall through, then you have to mention this fall through with a keyword of fall through. And uh, I think that's a rare case that you might want to use it. But now you can see that four is there, five is there. So you have to explicitly mention this fall through in every single case if you want that to happen. I think that's a great architecture to have. So this is the basic stuff. Now one more thing that you can do here is, uh, for example, I'm going to go ahead and print out the rating here. So I'm going to simply say, hey, I want to print the rating here. Notice I'm outside the switch in case uh, block here. When I run this one here, I get my rating that it is four. Now, another thing that you're going to see is the scope of a variable. Now, for example, if I go ahead and cut this rating out and I move this rating into a switch in case and separate it by colon, I just move up here. Now this rating, the scope of this rating is only inside this switch in case. And once you move outside of that, uh, this variable rating is not available to you. So make sure this is a common mistake that might happen while writing code in Golang. So let's save this. And if I try to run that again, uh, we can see that undefined rating. So the scope is really also very important. I'm going to comment this one out for a moment. And I'm going to show you one more thing here that if you are having something like this, and in this case, you want to evaluate something like this, that if the rating is actually greater than uh, probably four, then I want to do certain thing. Now this is going to give you an error. Let me save that and show you that. And there we go. It says, hey, what you are doing in valid case rating stuff like that. So does that mean that we cannot do this kind of operation? Kind of yes and kind of no. No, you cannot do it actually this way. So let me define another thing here or another scenario. So we're going to have a simple temperature whose value is going to be uh, something like negative five, pretty cold. 
And now we want to evaluate for multiple cases. This is almost going to sound very similar to a very nested if and else statement. So yes, that is possible, but the syntax is a little bit different. In this case, you can have a switch in case, but we don't provide any expression to evaluate. If we don't provide any expression to evaluate, then we can mark these conditional checks here. So we can simply say if temp is actually less than zero, uh, then I would like to print out a statement that says uh, something like it's cold. There we go. And I can actually now copy and paste this one. So copy that and I want to evaluate if temperature is actually equals to zero and we can simply say it's right at zero. There we go and we can have another case which is going to be if the temperature is uh, greater than probably 20. Again you got the point that how this is being done. So it's moderate uh, temp. There we go. Now we can just simply go ahead and run this one and this is actually going to evaluate all the stuff. It says it's cold. So now there is a syntax, so make sure you remember that. Let me summarize that quickly. That if you want to fall through with multiple cases, then you have to provide a something that is actually being evaluated in every single case. You have the syntax of this comma separated where two or more of these cases can be evaluated at the same time. But if you want to use switch in case as a conditional statement, kind of an elaborated or uh, exhaustive if and else syntax, then you also have to make sure that you don't pass anything, any expression to be evaluated just with the switch in case. You go ahead and evaluate them inside these cases, not in the switch syntax. And finally, last but not the least, make sure you are aware about where the limit of or the scope of your variable is ending and where it's starting. So there we go. Not really bad, but it was something worth mentioning here. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you up in the next video.